Dios. Yo, what's up, Bob here. Yesterday was the equinox, signaling the end of summer. And I thought it was the perfect opportunity to go ahead and put a bow on my Summer of CTI series. And today we're gonna to do that with three burning records from trumpeter Freddie Hubbard. The first one is possibly the most important CTI record that you can go out in the world and find. And it's one you don't see very often because it's locked up in all of our collections. Of course, I am talking about Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay. This record features Joe Henderson on tenor sax, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Ron Carter on bass, Herbie Hancock on piano, yeah, and Lenny White on the drums. This is a landmark session, one of Freddie's most important records, recorded in 1970 at Inglewood Cliffs by Rudy Van Gelder. It has this iconic cover that we all know. I would guess this is a sun rising, a red sunset. Nice picture of Freddie on the back. Inside of the gatefold is just some red clay. This is a beautiful record. The song Red Clay has that iconic head. And this is a really soulful and funky record that if you're a fan of Freddie Hubbard, this should most certainly be in your collection. It's on that green CTI label. This is the very first pressing, very clean copy. This is definitely a record that has some audiophile aspects to it. It's very well recorded by Rudy. Now, there has been some criticism about the kick drum sound. You know, Lenny has, as we've talked about in the past, this oil drum that has been made into a kick drum. And on this session, he came in with his steel drums and Ron decided that that wasn't the right sound. It's, mm -hmm. It was really cool, and it, sound, it sounded great. Although, when I took that drum to Rudy Van Gelder's to do Red Clay with Ron Carter, he said, nope, you can't use that drum, <laughs> nope. It had a certain kind of sound. So they pulled a old, big, like 26 inch kick out of the studio somewhere that had like, I'm sure you've seen these type of kick drums. They have like murals painted on the front of them and they're very kind of uh, big bandish kick drum, right? Well, they kind of tuned it up and made it incredibly dead and boxy sounding. And there's been a lot of criticism about the kick drum sound over the years on this record. That said, Ron might have been right. Maybe a big fat resonant sound wasn't the right sound for this group of tunes. I think that the kick drum sound works very well within the context of the songs. And you can't let a kick drum sound dictate your whole opinion of these arrangements. Freddie is absolutely burning on here. Herbie plays some very beautiful sort of mood music, very textural, very spacious and ambient sounding at times. Obviously, Herbie will also absolutely flat out shred if necessary. Ron, he's doing the Ron Carter thing. He's funky. He's the, he is the very definition of solitude. 
when we're getting into the tenor sax, we're getting into Joe Henderson. Joe can pretty much do it all. And Lenny, fantastic drummer, a young guy, when he made this record. Now, as important as Red Clay is, I would like to show a couple other titles that I think you should also have. Skydive. This is Freddie Hubbard's 20th record. <laughs> Recorded in 1972 at Inglewood Cliffs by Rudy Van Gelder. But 20 records, that's incredible. You know, a lot of the bands that we talk about all the time, and artists that we often speak about, might have 7 or 10 records at best. 20, and he wasn't even near done. So... That's really incredible. This record doesn't have any of the problems that Red Clay has as far as the sounds go. It's a complete audiophile session. Billy Cobham is just absolute beast on the drums. Erto adding all kinds of beautiful sounding percussion in the soundstage. It's really cool to hear all the different instruments moving around. Freddie, of course, is burning on this. Yeah, none of the tunes have super iconic sounding heads like red clay but all the playing is great the sound is good freddie is on fire the whole crew here is absolutely burning george benson playing fantastic hubert laws is on here he's adding a whole bevy of different instruments this is a great record if you don't have it pick it up probably a 15 to 20 dollar record is on your typical CTI label, yes. I've shown all these records before. And there are more Freddie Hubbard records that you should definitely get on CTI, like Straight Life. That's a great one. But I thought I would show this one just because I love the cover so much and the lineup is really fantastic. You've got Milt Jackson's Sunflower, right? You've got these ostriches on the front. <laughs> Herbie is on here. Ron Carter is on here. On guitar, Jay Berliner is on here. Billy Cobham, Ralph McDonald, and of course, Freddie Hubbard. This is a somewhat more low-key and exotic sounding session, of course, recorded at Inglewood Cliffs, as most CTI records were. Milt Jackson, great vibraphonist. You might know him from some of his Blue Note sessions. That said, this is an incredible record. Not expensive, 15 bucks probably. Mine is on that yellow CTI label. And this record, Sunflower, I thought might be the best way to end my series, Summer of CTI. A true passion project. <laughs> you know, when you do a series about a subject like CTI, it's um, it's really very specific, and not everybody is going to want to check it out. So I would like to thank all of the people who have watched the Summer of CTI series. I just wanted to do something fun and lighthearted this summer, and I didn't get to touch on everything that I wanted to talk about, like some of the wacky covers of CTI. I might do some shorts about some of these things and just toss them out there. But there are still quite a few records that I didn't find that I was searching for. I'm not trying to get every CTI title. I'm just trying to get the ones that I want. Like um, uh, Joe Beam's Stone Flower, yes are some of the Art Farmer titles. Jim Hall has several cool records on CTI. Chet Baker has a nice title on there that I would like to have. Did not find those. They're, they're the tough ones to find, the more expensive ones, the, the quote unquote rarer ones. Didn't want to just pop on eBay and just throw down the cash and get the, get the records. I, I thought that was, contradictory to my series. I wanted to find the records in the wild, 
see what the prices were, show the records to you, and talk about what we had to pay to get them. We know that the music is, I mean, not everybody's bag, but mostly great. Mostly great and uh, a lot of fun. So thanks for watching and until we meet again, Bob out.